it's now six o'clock, I'll call the select board uh, to order. Uh, I'll call the school committee to order. And I'll call the finance committee to order. Okay. Thank you. So tonight we have the select board and the finance committee and the school committee together to uh, to talk about different things and budgets and stuff like that. So start off to anyone that wants to start off talking. Anybody? Anyone? Well, um, we had originally sent out uh, the first email requesting this because yep. um, we were looking to see where the um, committee was that was formed on the capital improvements that we voted on at the town meeting. I think it was May 9th. Um, just what the status was of that. And then also there was some money that the, uh, I probably will say this wrong, but the way I understood it was that there was money that finance committee had wanted to put into the select board budget for um, a feasibility study for regionalization. And so we were just looking to see where we were with both of those items and what the next steps were, if there was anything that we as a school committee needed, uh, or a school administration needed for those capital improvements, or when those meetings were, and just kind of where we're at. And Charles, in regards to the, the capital? Uh, uh, we haven't had any meetings. All right, and then the, I believe the feasibility study would take a vote of the uh, select board chair and yourself to, to move that forward. Is that right, Chris? I know you're not part of the meeting, but uh, is that my no. no, for the two capital projects, it was the chair of the select board okay, the and the chair board. of the finance committee okay. were to meet and approve going ahead with the projects. Okay. For the study, that I think it was 20000 I think you put in, in addition into the selectman's budget, was to try and contact uh, Collins Institute or some other organization to try and conduct a study for us. And the, uh, the uh, study that uh, we were thinking about was not just a study to think about the kind of regionalization, it was really a study to figure out what, what we should be doing with the school system. Um, and it, driven partially by this is that uh, we understand that uh, there's a desire to uh, perhaps build a new school. And uh, we have uh, very strong doubts that uh, the town will vote to uh, raise taxes to do that. It would take a massive override. And so we thought that before we got into uh, talking about building a school, that would be beneficial to these three boards as well as the town as a whole to see what all the options are for education for graduate students. So it would be, be a broad range study that just to study the feasibility. All right, so, I, so for the feasibility study, I think the next part would be just to reach out to a company or a person to, to move forward with the study? Well, uh, I think the first thing is that since we had just put it in as something that um, would be there as a probably maybe only an initial funding of the study, that if the select board is interested, then I think the first steps would be that we would get together with the select board and the school committee and work out exactly what kinds of things we were looking for in the study, so we could put together a proposal for a study. Yeah, so I think we're all, we're all together, together now, so I mean, maybe we can have some ideas that what, especially I would say the school committee is looking for, what you'd want out of the study. Uh, but I, and, I, and I guess, you know, I, I think part of it would be, too, as far as, um, you know, what is needed moving forward for the future of Granby and the, the residents and the students, uh, what is needed and what's going to be warranted for the future. Uh, you know, no, we're not talking two, three years down the road, but we're also talking 15, you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, so that uh, we're preparing the town, the people that move the town, the people that live in the town uh, for the future. So, um, Correct me or not, didn't we reach out to area towns about Regionalization, and they all said no. We did. Right. We did, and they all said no. Mm -hmm. so we, we put out a survey last year, right? That's just right. about that, and there were some who responded back. 
like about potential for shared services, which we already do with some districts, and it, but nobody was like, yes, regionalization. So, but that was an initial um, cursory survey that we had sent out to seven or eight other local districts. Now that go out to the school, like the superintendents, it went to or did it go to the, the select board or That mayors? survey just went to superintendents and school committees. Okay. And we recognize it's not just a school committee superintendent decision, it's a town, town decision. Um, and that was just initial information gathering was the intention around that. Right, where I think the school committee and the superintendent of the schools would know have an idea where they would stand as far as you know what the size of the school, what they could you know handle for students moving forward too. So I think that's I think that's what they're looking at, and giving their thoughts and opinions on as the answer. I would imagine same yeah. thing we would do. Yep, yep. And if I may, I think part of the challenge is all these things that we're talking about are connected, but they don't necessarily run on parallels, right? So the capital improvement requests, the money in the select board budget for a broader study about regionalization or the future of education, um, the statement of interest that we submitted to the MSBA, right? So they're all connected, but not all running on parallels and have different timelines and, and things like that. And I think it's just difficult I think we feel, and I don't want to speak for everyone, but feel like it's difficult to move forward. And sometimes we feel like we're the only ones talking about it. Yeah. But I recognize we're the ones living it every day too, right? Like finance committee isn't living it in the same way that we are, nor a select board. So I think for some of us, it causes some frustration, but I don't think the frustration is with finance committee or with select board or with town manager or with any individual. I think we're just living it every day. So I just want to put that out there and like recognize that you know when we walk into the building at junior senior high school and we're having there's an issue with the boiler or something like that it's like oh where are we on this yeah. project what are we going to do about that because this isn't something that we had planned for so i think like we feel like it's a pebble of some size in our shoe and i'm sure you all do to a certain degree um and i just want to acknowledge i think sometimes we're feeling like we're the squeaky wheel and um, we don't want to be that pebble in your shoe, but we also want to say, like, I'm just concerned about the, that, that building because I think doing nothing is going to create a potentially bigger problem down the road. Um, and I also recognize that finance committee select board school, we can't sit here tonight and say, oh yeah, like if we get invited to participate with the MSBA, yeah, let's just jump on it. That's a town decision, that's not any individual decision. So certainly recognize that, but if we were invited and we were to say we could participate, we're five to seven years out from that point. So every six months, eight months that we go without having some idea of what that next step could be, we run the risk of, instead of a, the town being able to be reimbursed for a project, like we have to full some, um, f fund something fully on our own. And there's just these things that we're constantly thinking about, as I'm sure other people are as well. So I, I just want to kind of set the table with that, that I think these are all connected, but not always running on parallels. And Stephen, in reference to what you're saying too, and as you said, you, you kind of live it so, you know, when you're seeing it every day, it, it's on your mind versus yeah. other people who aren't seeing it every day. Yeah. It may not be. They're worried about the things that they see every day, which yeah. is very understandable. Um, I, I guess a feasibility, feasibility study uh, is probably something obviously we need to move forward with. And uh, to regionalize isn't, sounds like it's not the answer. Because <coughs> just based on who we're going to regionalize with and what towns are available, it sounds like it's not an option at this point. So. I guess for a feasibility study, I, I think I disagree with that. Okay, uh, and the reason is is that uh, our understanding we've never seen actually any of the things. Our understanding is that uh, the uh, kind of informal approach that's been made uh, doesn't really tell you anything. 
we just get a we got reaction to this because there's nothing uh, there's nothing to put it in context with. And so that uh, I think we need some outside professional group to make approaches, find out how to make approaches to what schools and what districts, where the districts are, in order to really figure out whether somebody is interested or not. Um, the, uh, so I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, rule out the possibility of uh, saying that someplace there is a way for us to think about regionalization of different school districts. And some, I think everybody should recognize that. You know what the inflation rate is running these last couple of years? You know how much you can raise taxes in town? <laughs> There's a mismatch. Every school district is going to be coming under a tremendous amount of pressure in the next few years. Tremendous amount of pressure. Because not just personnel costs, but cost of everything are, are skyrocketing. And uh, you can only raise taxes by 2.5%. And that takes care of everything in the town, not just the schools. You think the schools have 2.5% of that as, as what they can do. So it, I, I think that, I think that when people may start to realize that everybody's situation is going to be different. And everybody's going to be in some financial problems in, in the next few years. And that should be figured into who is looking at what about schools. And it really is, it really is a select board to select board issue. It's not a school to school issue. It's first and foremost a select board to select board issue of what should be done for the towns. So, so I, I, would, I would very strongly recommend that we consider going ahead with a real study of uh, regionalization. So well, uh, I'm sorry, respectfully though, we did reach out to the Collins Center, which is the, the people at UMass that sort of help guide people that are interested in regionalization, and they're the ones that told us to reach out to neighboring districts initially. So we followed the people that are sort of the regionalization gurus to say, before you start to spend money on a feasibility study, you need to know, because a feasibility study isn't going to find who's going to regionalize, who you're going to regionalize with. The feasibility study is gonna work out as how the towns pay, Who's going to be responsible? Where's the school going to be? How's transportation going to work? What curriculum are you going to follow? Those are the questions for regionalization that the Collins study sort of, we need to know who first before we can put the cart before the horse. So we, we followed their direction. And I do believe that we sent you the letter that was sent out to all of the towns and we sent you the results of that. I don't have my computer in front of me, but this was um, early, Early, early part of this year. June 3rd. So we, we had we have sent you that. We can send it to you again. We can send it to everybody again. Stephen it looked like he found it, so we can reforward it. But we have shared that with you. So um, I apologize for the disconnect, but we have shared that information with you. So it doesn't feel um, it doesn't feel responsible to go and do the same thing again when we've already talked to the people that sort of guide those conversations. Well, I think we kind of tend to come from this, come at this from a more of a scientific point of view, in that um, it's very easy, uh, people know, to send out questionnaires, and, and unless they're designed perfectly, they're sort of worthless. You'll get answers, I'm sure, and you can tabulate the answers, anybody can do that. But whether or not they are the right questions and they're going to the right people is an entirely different question, and I don't think that that should be done by a group of amateurs. So what, so what if we get to the point where, um, you know, from the select board that we sent out to surrounding towns a formal letter uh, to their select board uh, asking them, you know, is there a possibility that if they can uh, regionalize with us and get an answer from by, them? One reason it should be done by an outside group is an outside group could spend, before you even get to the point of sending out, an outside group could spend some time talking to people in individual towns and finding out the way they think about some things and get their opinion about what kind of financial problems they're going to be in. The, the idea is that if you can set the context for our town and for other towns, and everybody agrees that this is the context of which this should be studied, then it's much easier to have people realistically approach the questions. Also, we were not thinking that the questionnaire or that the purpose of hiring an outside consulting group 
Well, it's just to find out about regionalization, it's to find out the other issues too. For example, if the town is not going to spend money to build a high school, uh, what are the options that we should be considering for education? Uh, what does that mean? What, what does that mean? It means, it means that uh, we may in fact want to know what temporary classrooms look like and the cost of town. Because, because here's the thing is that you can, you can have whatever you want town meeting to do. <coughs> But ultimately, it's going to come down to the people in town voting to raise their taxes by probably now upwards of 10%, given the way the inflation is still going on. And we think that rather than at the last minute be faced with the realization that the town is not going to vote to do that, and then have no idea what to do, that we should be thinking ahead of time as to what the backup plans are and what the options are. So it's almost to what you'd be saying is that we have a couple different an A, B, C. Uh, this is what would what would it look like if we needed to build a new school? If we were unable to build a new school, B, what would be our options? If we weren't able to build a new school, what would we do to continue to serve at the level that we're serving at now for education moving forward? And I think we're three, not or, or C, not in any particular order. But then it, again, is it? Uh, uh, Utilization, is that possible as well? Maybe those are the three options that we look at. So I guess I'm having a, a really big time disconnect because we know that we're several years away from anything and we voted at town meeting to do these two capital improvements, which would help the status of the building right now to provide education for the students that are currently in the building. Yet we've not, none, not done anything since May 9th to have any of those meetings to see what we're going to do. So are we just going to sit here and talk in circles and just talk and not really do anything? The townspeople of Granby that were present at that meeting voted these two capital improvements. And yes, I understand that there was a caveat that was put in that there's a special subcommittee to approve those things, but no one's met yet. Tomorrow's December 1st. Yeah, I don't have any objection to having meetings. So, what, so you guys are the committee. Why haven't you done anything? Why are we sitting? Why are we sitting here talking about this on November thirtieth, from a May 9th meeting, for for no meeting? There, we've not done anything. So, what is the point of having these kinds of discussions if we're not actually going to make forward progress? The town of Granby spoke. They voted that they wanted to do these capital improvements, and we've not done anything. We've not even had a meeting. And to me, I can, I'm sure you all can tell because my voice is getting louder and higher. That's infuriating that we've not done a single thing since May 9th, despite repeated emails from the school committee. When are you meeting? When is this happening? Why aren't we doing anything? So now, not only have we last, how many months is that? May is the fifth month and we're going at seven months. We're almost to seven months since the town voted to go proceed with these capital improvements. Now we're going to recreate the regionalization discussion because we don't we're amateurs and we didn't get it right. I don't, that, I don't want to interrupt you. I don't think anybody's saying that as far as so, I, I think it's just trying to move forward with the, the feasibility well, move forward, study. But with that. How slow are we gonna move forward, Glenn? I'm sorry, well, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful and I don't mean to be flip, but May 9th. What I'm saying right now is we're talking about the feasibility study and moving forward with it. So if we can come up, and I kind of just gave three three examples of what that maybe needs to be in the But one of those list. examples is helping to get through, and we've already voted as a town to do some of that, and we've not done any of that. Right, but I understand that, but there's a lot, there's more of a study to where, what two years brings, what five years brings, what seven years brings. We're, you know, like Kevin, I think Steve was talking about, we're seven years out from school, if even that was the case. If we get voted, and I understand that, but at the same time, we still have this building that's here that's housing kids that are currently in Granby and so, going to school. Yeah. So John and I will make that our priority uh, to get that. We'll look at what the capital needs are for the schools, for what the high school needs. Uh, but I think we still, at the same time from here, is really look at what we need for the feasibility study and put that together and move forward on that. Get that out there, get that going. 
because yeah. that is part of what we need to know too, right? Yeah, I agree. We should we should start that. It's it's a little more complicated than just figuring out what the needs are. Um, we have goes back to it goes back to this question of uh, if you're doing things to the high school and you, you reach a point where over if over a number of years you do a certain amount of whatever you want to call it, improvements, additions, costs, right? yeah. yeah, the cost. If, if the costs reach a certain level, then you would trigger a requirement that you redo the whole school. And if that's going to happen, then we really have to seriously consider about whether or not we're in such trouble that we just cannot do any improvements to high school. We have to immediately go into plan B or plan C and try that. So I mean, that's, I, we should do this right away, but it's, it's not as simple as just asking what needs to be done. I do want to just, and I know Jen and Audrey have their hands that we also sent prior to when the meeting was originally scheduled, like it was internal, but like a facilities assessment just to give like everyone on the same page what the facilities needs are. So we went through that and sent that in an email prior to, I forget when we were supposed to meet first in October, just so, so everyone is working from the same, and it is ours, granted. Um, I think anybody could come in and see some of those needs. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there too. Yeah, no, we have no doubt that there are lots of needs. Yeah. And, it's, it's yeah, and I think part of the challenge for us is, and I promise I'll stop, but you guys, is that like we come to the select board or try to work with finance committee around the school budget and we're allocating like a significant money, a portion of that money for these facility needs that aren't going to students. It's because the boiler, one of the boilers is breaking down every three weeks because like maintenance and of course we need to do that so that the students can be in the building, but I think we would all agree that this isn't a new problem. It's not been created by this administration or the previous or even the previous to that. It's been, you know, I think it's 1961 the building was built and it's had, the, the roof is new. The roof was granted in 2019, I think was new. So I certainly think that, but I've also heard finance committee talk about a new roof got put on West Street too. So I, I certainly, recognize all those things and I think just want everyone to understand where we're coming from too. But sorry Jen. I got a question for the for the finance committee. Yeah. So you don't think the principals at all these other schools or the superintendents at all these other schools know the answers they deliver? What is there another question you're thinking of? Whether they want us to regionalize or not? I don't know what other questions you think of professional group can come up with besides the professionals here. You got a superintendent here, Hatfield, Hadley, they all have their superintendents. What other questions are you looking for answers on? Well, given the context of the economic context that we're in, um, I think part of the part of the framing of the question is that, all right, you're a school district and economically wages are going to be asked for a big, big increase is coming up. Just what people are saying, even with inflation. And if those kinds of circumstances exist, how well positioned are you to keep running your school as an independent school? That's, that's one question, that's, that's a big question. Uh, for Granby, I think it's impossible. Right. I, don't, I don't know how we can do that. So Okay, but hypothetically, let's say, yeah, we're all these other schools say, no, we're fine. How far out are we going to go? I think Hatfield was like a ridiculous reach for it. I don't think there's a parent in this town who would want to send their kids on a cold, wintry day on a school bus to drive a half hour, 45 minutes north of here. Yeah, and, and that's fine. If that happens, that's okay. The important thing is, is that we feel that a study has been done given the context in which everybody's going to find themselves in a few years. And if in that context everybody else thinks they're okay, Granby thinks we're not okay, then we know that plan A, spend whatever, build a new school is out of the question. Plan B, regionalize is out of the question. So we're already looking at plan C and we should be spending our time and energy looking at what plan C is and what it's going to be. It would help a and lot. And that's why you think the feasibility? Otherwise we just sit around and have these meetings where everybody says, oh, 
I don't know what you're talking about. Everybody I know says, sure, I'll raise taxes by 12, 15%. I don't no, bother. No one's saying that. that. Yeah. And that, that's right. That's exactly right. That's our point. I haven't heard anybody say that. And yet, every preliminary study that's been done, the cost of the school is going to be enormous. Well, I, I, no one's disputing that. But at the same time, we still have an obligation to educate the students up to age 18 through 12th grade through and through age 22 for special needs students. Exactly. So exactly. we have to figure out what that is. And exactly. we can't just only hear that we don't have the money to do it. So we've got, you're right, we have to do something. But we have brought things that were steps to be taken that have sat for seven months to do nothing on. So how is that any better? So let's, let's you know, switch well, gears What steps are you talking about, the, the, the gym, well, the cafeteria? Yeah, those, th those things are big things. Those are huge ticket items that was, you know, I'm sure you guys will know the numbers more than me, but there were several million, two million dollars or something for improvements for the school. And, you know, there's supposed to be a subcommittee to discuss that and see if, and see if that was approved. But we've not done anything. So we sat on it for an additional seven months. And so now those, you know, we, we haven't even gone out for quotes or bids or anything. We've done nothing for seven months. And so some of those things we need, we need to make forward progress on so that we have a building that is in shape to be able to educate our students and do things besides have the, the further discussion about what plan A, B, and C are. This is not part of that plan. This is part that was voted on by the, the members of Granby. So to, to pretend to go to what John was talking about too, that if depending on how much money is spent on the capital improvements that could trigger a number that now we're above. Right, and so, so in so seven months we probably could have figured that out. Well, I think it's something that's easy enough to be figured out what, where we, what the numbers would be. Well, the, the question you ask is that it sounds like the plan is to continue improving the current facilities. So the question is, how long can that work? That work one year, two years, three years? And then, then the question following that is that, well, if that's only going to work for two years, and then everything comes to a halt because we're faced with that do or die situation, you know, raise taxes by 15% and build a school, or you close the school down entirely, then you have to know what your next plan is. And if regionalization is not the plan, then we have to know how do we go about getting temporary classrooms and putting it up. And then you think about this question. Is it worth spending all this money in the short term, which is going to get thrown away, or is it worth spending it right away to move into Plan C? So when you say close the school entirely, entirely, you're saying close the high school and not educate seven through twelve. What, what does it? What happens? What happens? What does this, the? What does the MSB say if you are proposing to go over their limit for uh, repairing the school? I don't know. Do they? Well, well okay. Well, so I, I, with and, the and repairing the, of the building, though, it's every I believe five years, and then one of the projects falls off. So then you have you work on the building, you work on the building, and then a year falls off every time. So it's when you're calculating that amount that you spend, it's in a, a I believe five year span. It's either three or five years. It might even be three, but I thought it was five. And I think we had asked that question at one of our at one of our last meetings um, about that about triggering that um, that threshold. Yeah, and this is just an example of one thing I'm saying. Nobody really knows what the context is of what we're talking about. So I, I do agree we ought to get started, but we ought to figure out what this whole context is to answer all these sorts of questions. Is the time for improving schools a two-year period, a three-year period, a five-year period? What is it? And it, are we going to be able to do that or not? And then still the question is, what happens if you try to go beyond that? Does the state, in fact, say, first of all, that you just can't do the project? Or does the state say you can't run the school? Or does the state say if you can't find a way to do it for less amount of money so it fits with the range, then you're not going to do the school? There are all sorts of questions here that I don't know the answer to. I know you've been sitting here. Yeah, you so raise your hand. <laughs> my question is, and I understand where you're coming from, and I understand our financial situation because economically, we all personally feel it. But I'm also thinking about my future, which is behind me. Those people behind me are my future. I am thinking 10, 20 years down the line, what does our community look like? 
And if we start picking off pieces of it, it's not a whole community anymore. And the other thing is, if we're doing this with the schools, now I'm just thinking financially, what happens to all the other buildings that we have to maintain and upgrade and improve based on like future changes on the needs of those? So it's we should always be looking at the future, wondering what that is, what it looks like, and how we can put aside funds to help support those future needs. Because right now, everything we're doing is a reactive instead of a proactive. So I don't like living in a situation where we're constantly reacting to things that need to be done immediately. So it's, to me, is not financially or fiscally responsible. It, it comes down to the question of, uh, what's your recommendation? Do you recommend that we just proceed piecemeal and do these things and then hope that there, somebody finds a way to develop the money? Or do we start by saying, here's how much money we have, how do we allocate that money? The Finance Committee, of course, has to recommend that we figure out how much money do we have and then figure out how to allocate that money. And I, yeah, and I understand that, but we should also be looking at what the future is. And I'm not saying just the school. I am looking at everything, like in our community, because this is a community. It goes from the oldest person in the community to the youngest person in the community. We have to meet everybody's needs. So it, it does, it makes it difficult, and I understand that, and I understand financially it's difficult. But we as a community need to start moving where we are looking at the future, putting away funds, knowing that something is going to need to be fixed. It's, that's how I see it. So I guess is there, and I don't know if the, if the feasibility study would even cover this or not, but is there something that we should have where someone comes in looks at the high school and tells us we have some idea of some of the things that need to be fixed. However, if we're saying if the town did decide to pass and build a new school, that could be up to eight years out. So should we have someone come in and say, what are we looking for for the next eight years that could cost us to fix things as things are going along? Things that we can, we know about now. We know we just replaced the roof. We know the roof is good for a while. We're talking about the boilers and things like that. Is that something that's going to be replaced? We talked about now redoing the whole system as far as heating and things like that. And my concern is that do we get to a point that because each year we replace something, cost goes up and up. At what point do we trigger that number? And that's my concern is that okay, now we trigger that number. Now we're we're stuck. We can't build a new school. Does it come down to that? Even though you've been approved for it, but. The state says, well, wait a second, you've already made X amount of percentage of repairs and improvements to that building. You no longer qualify for a new school. I guess it's the, really the big picture that I'm trying to figure out where, you know, it's on think We need to have some, what do we need to do to move forward? And absolutely, you're right. The future, and I always say that too, is that before I moved to Grandy, people prepared Grandy so my kids had the chance to go to school and go through the system and not just the school but other things that go on in town the same thing you know several years ago we were able to build a new middle school for the future for, for the kids that are coming here for the future so and again i think the next plan for us would be you know we, we talked about we have a new safety center we have a new pretty much a highway department um you know we have a new middle school what's the big ticket item that's really left for us and we all know it's the high school and it's been that way, it's been talked about, I and mean, hopefully, I can say at least probably eight, eight years since oh, yeah. my oldest daughter was in high yeah. school. So I, get, I think it's really, to talk about what, what is, what do we, uh, the feasibility study is, how do we move forward and what steps we need to take? And that's why I'm saying is that, not just that ABC approach, but the last thing I wanna do is, is kind of say, we said start spending money and money and money to fix projects and to find out, well, you've gone too far and you've spent too much money, you no longer qualify for a new school. And now we're saying, okay, now we have the school we have, we need to keep on so going. That's a, that's a very good point because, for example, when we talk about regionalization or some kind of regionalization, that doesn't mean the entire Grandview school system gets absorbed someplace else or joins them someplace else. 
if you look at if you look at small towns around the country, uh, that with the exception of some small towns that have enormous uh, business bases for the capital, I think we're one of the smallest towns that has uh, all the school system to itself. And I, I can't really imagine that it would be beneficial to us to get rid of the education of you know, the kids through the first six grades. We've got this new schools all set up. But the question really has to be studied about, should we in fact be trying to run a high school? I think that's part of that. I think we'll find out by looking at the study that that's the real nub of the issue. Should we be trying to run our own high school? Or do we have to find a different way to educate high school kids? And unless we get somebody to actually put that in a context study, it, we can sit here and do what we've done for the last umpteen years. You can say, oh, no, of course we want our own high school. Of course we want the kids in town. How are you going to pay for it? Oh, of course people are going to raise taxes to do that. Well, all right, if that's the way you want to do it, try it. But I don't think that's going to work. Hey, is, now, is there a way where, and I, and I guess this is, I have to say, put the, the horse before the cart, but it's where it belongs. Right. That would occur, the, the cart the, before the, the horse. horse? Yes, that's it. Where, if we had an idea of what the, if the town is willing to spend money on a new school, that would tell us right away which direction we need to move in. So, can I just ask something about the feasibility study in general? Because I'm a little confused. Have you, has anyone reached out to see if there's even an institute that would facilitate such a I'm going to say kind of broad study because when we reached out about the regionalization, it was a very specific, um, you know, we were looking for these things and the cost was pretty astronomical just for a small, you know, is anyone in the nearby communities, you know, willing to regionalize? Like those simple questions, if the Collins Institute ran it, was going to cost us 12 to is it 12,000? 12, 12 to 15,000. 15, just for these very simple questions. So my, my question is, does the town have you guys looked at who would run this study? Is it financially even possible for the town? Some of these feasibility studies run hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so is there even something that is that broad to facilitate that? Because the reason we didn't go through with that, like what Jen said, is they told us if you don't have someone in a neighboring community, that is even willing to collaborate, it's essentially a waste of this money. And we're all saying, like, well, we're feeling the burden of the financial. So I just want to make sure, as a town, too, though, is this the most fiscally responsible thing to pursue if we're looking at some of these very broad questions where, unfortunately, we know a lot of the answers. I know that it might not be in the way that, you know, some people feel that it should have been um, gathered, but it was reached out to every community. And it's, you know, regionalization is definitely not an easy burden it's not um, if you regionalize you, you're not absorbing the cost you're still you are still also educating as a town those students are still paying um, right. substantially and actually Somewhere if you else. when you really look at regionalization and you'll see there's a community not too far from us that are in a lawsuit trying to break their um, regionalization because it's financially not stable actually um, it's extremely expensive so I'm just curious with such a broad study, is this even something that someone would be willing to take on? Um, I, I, yeah, to me, I don't, I don't, I'm sorry, Jen, how do you want to say something? I just wanted to emphasize that regionalization still costs money. Yes. It's not, it's not a no cost option. Correct. And, and, th and that's why, again, the context in which you talk about this, and the context in which the study is all important. We've used regionalization, it's the wrong word. So even if is the wrong word. I well, because look at the even a feasibility a study, though, You're, just what, a generalized I mean, feasibility. Still it's still regionalization. If we ship all of our kids off, 7 through 12, you're asking someone to house them. Otherwise, you're asking. And you're still paying for them to be bused. Yes. They're going to be busing. They're going to be paying so school please. choices. So you know. I'm going to go back to one of my original questions. Is there a way that we could bring up, and, and bring it to Chris if you would know it or not, at town meeting, if the if the I, I guess would the town support a new high school? Because if the answer at that point in time is no, why would we go down that 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 road? We start start looking at what are other options. Support it without any knowledge of like 
Well, it, but, it, but there, there are some knowledge that it would, it would, we could give roughly. You'd have an idea of what the school would cost to build the school. We could get that kind of rough idea. They would know what the tax increase in the town would be. We could, we could say the state would pick up 60%, 70%, 80%, you know, whatever. We could give those examples because my concern is that, again, if we're, if we're spending money on a school and in eight years we spent, I'm not just throwing numbers out there, so say if the, the trigger number was 50 million and we spent 45 million, again, it's up sure it's way out of whack, but, and okay, we build a new school and we tear down the school that we just spent Forty million dollars in. That's my concern. Is that are we throwing away good and money to get you, to the future? But that's kind of always been the narrative here too, which is why nothing gets done because we're always like, well, what if this, and then oh, we kick the bucket down the road. But it's not and kicking we do the another study. It's not. I'm not happens. looking for a study. And what I'm saying is, if the town people aren't willing to spend the money on building a new school, then we shouldn't be looking at building a new school. Because that's reality, well, that's where it comes from, the money. But we're not necessarily even saying building a new school. East Meadow wasn't rebuilt, it was remodeled. There was sections added to it, but it's not like they tore the entire thing down and started from well, scratch. Well, again, then I think a feasibility study would give us that. Is but, there's things we could well, do we to the high school. That, that type of feasibility but, study, though, could run you hundreds of thousands done, of dollars. So that's time. my question to this committee is, if that's the avenue we're going. Isn't well, that my same? thing is, I'd rather spend a hundred thousand dollars than millions of dollars. And but that would be the same way. feasibility study that would most likely happen if MSBA accepted us, correct? Mm. So I don't think MSBA is going to do what John's suggesting to say. Here's an option with you sending seven through 12 out, right? MSBA is in it to build, right? They're gonna make their money off of it from building, renovating. Right. They're not gonna give us an option that says, if you decided to send your kids to Hatfield or Ludlow, this would be the impact. That, that, so I think like what I'm hearing is, that's where I think John's saying it's regionalization is the wrong word because- You're it, saying close the high school and ship them out. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Well, I'm saying, see, this, this is another thing, is that I'm not saying any one particular thing. Just look at the high school as an example. I mean, you're saying, can we ship out everybody from 7 through 12? Well, why is that the question? Why isn't the question, can we ship out everybody from 10, 11, and 12? Why can't we ship everybody from 9 through 12? Why can't we do other kinds of options like this? Like where are the other kids going to go? But that's what you have to figure out. What's feasible? <coughs> so so the, the bottom line, though, is that the feasibility part is we're talking about a structure that needs work. The high school is the building well, in question. Okay, let me let me give you the context work. of that. Then and I don't know if this is still the case, but a few years ago, the high school was valued at four million dollars, and I think something like twenty percent of the cost was where the trigger came in. So, an eight hundred thousand dollar project, you got to build a new high school. Well, like Audrey just said, it's every every five years, and we've been well, asking that question. The roof would have put us over that, so that can't be. Correct. So can't right. you know? So where's who, where's you the got an idea on that, Chris? Who do we have to talk to? to find out the trigger level. We have it well, in an email. Well, thirty percent trigger level to bring it up. To thirty percent trigger ADA standards. Right. Trigger ADA standards. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There is no seismic code that we have to abide by in Massachusetts, but like over a three year period of time, three if years. you spend 30% of this assessed value of the bill, then you have to then implement ADA code to the current standards. So we have $1.2 million to spend over three years. But what is the current value of the building? Uh, it's $4 million last time I was. I'm sure it's not the same anymore, though, with inflation and everything else that's gone up. Well, you, but you're saying because things like, deteriorated to where it's not usable. <laughs> so well, I guess the problem is, uh, my just other concern hearing all of this is for the now, though. Unfortunately, regardless of what happens, if we look at feasibility and um, down the road dispersing, there are needs that are immediate because we have to house students in 7 through 12. Like we have, that is our obligation as a town. So in order to eliminate these, we've already identified, you know, the big needs, the like imperative, if a boiler goes tomorrow, we as a town have that responsibility. 
So my concern would be if we keep putting off or refiguring the needs, then there are needs right now. So we've already identified those um, in the two that went to town meeting that were voted on. Are we talking about re-identifying needs as of December 2022 and ignoring those past? Or I'm looking just like to go forward, what are we looking to re-identify? You know, I, think, I, think, I think it's already been identified as the areas that need to be repaired. You talked about the kitchen, you talked about the boiler. Those have been identified, there's something that, so I think as the capital uh, improvements, we get together as a committee, it's just putting that out, what needs to be done you know as far as the kitchen what needs to be done for the the boiler you know is it just replacing a boiler is it replacing you know this particular it's part it's the duct work and all the stuff that go along with it what is needed and obviously you know going out to bid and things like that those are the priorities that you're talking about you, you need, need to know you need to know what needs to be done now mm -hmm. that's been identified parts have been identified and you also need to have a good idea of what might need to be done in the next two years. Well, that's what I'm talking about, John, because that's my concern, because that's where, yes. to a point where it triggers that assessment value in the 30% that that's, we're spending. That's not an independent decision. Right, which is the hard part, though, and it's taken those seven months. If that drags another, you know, potentially, say it's six months, that's a whole year where that project would have dropped off, because it is every three years a project drops. And some of those needs, regardless of a boiler, goes, you know, we're going to have to fix them. So I guess that's just a concern. I do have a question. Didn't, wasn't the kitchen an issue like quite a few years back? Like a couple years back? During COVID, right? Yeah. It's been identified since 2020. We're still not able to use it. It's not being used. And why is that? Is that the air handling? Not and the board of health just came in recently and we still are unable to use the kitchen so they're all meals are being done in these up. in addition to that too part of the reason the other two jobs were proposed and then voted on too is the high school is the shelter for the town too isn't that part of it too and there's no working showers there's no right is that correct me if i'm wrong and that's part of the improvement was not it fixing the locker rooms mm -hmm. correct right yeah, because it's the town. Shop. So there's no there's no water. There's no usable showers in the locker rooms right wow. now. And if they have to cook, there's no. They can't there's use no the kitchen. kitchen. And there's no kitchen, right? So there's no kitchen. There's no water. And then even the numbers that were probably brought up in May. I'm if we talk inflation. Those numbers I'm sure have gone up because everything has gone up. Labor's gone up. Material, so there is that bit of urgency no. too. Yes and no, but actually, material has actually gone down, believe it or not, since the spring. Depending, as long as it's not well, back ordered or things. Well, lumber prices and all this stuff has considerably come back down to where it was. So, the, but in the spring and late fall last year, the skyrocket. So, some material has come up. That's the point. But I think it's just kind of really moving forward on that. We can start with that, John, the subcommittee, get that going. And I'd really like to, you know, square that away probably before the first of the year, uh, so we get moving on that uh, as things. But, and, but keep in mind though too is that these are some of the other things uh, as probably as we put towards. I think it'd be good if this this group meets again, uh, maybe you know monthly or bi-monthly, so we can kind of see where we are with things, because that is important as far as what is the next chapter, if you will, for the high school, because if we're starting to put money into it. There is a concern as to okay, at what point do you keep on putting money into it, and money into it, and then we look at building a new school, because that that is real. And then if we get to a point where you know we're talking about a new school, but the residents won't, it's going to be it's going to be an override. There's no ands if buts about it. It's not whether whatever that override would be is is to be determined. But I think is someone going to support? Excuse me, is someone going to uh, is the town residents going to support that? I think if we make a plan where the the school the high school has a like a repair plan in place and things are going to be done and there's going to be money to help do that for capital improvements and things like that I don't think everyone's bending over backwards asking for a new school we're asking a school that's not gonna that not gonna have the issues that it has and that's that's my excuse me, and that's my point if we're gonna say hey let's concentrate on the building we have now let's get that building up to where we where you want it to be let's start putting money into what we have 
are we ever going to exceed the money we would spend on building a new school? Let's get, you know, is, is it feasible? Is it, is, can we do something like that? Or do we just look at saying, are we just throwing good money away? And should we just say, this is it. We're not going to keep on throwing money into something we're not going to keep. We're going to move on to something different to do school. I do feel like this is a bit of deja vu, honestly, because I feel like we had very similar conversations in a town about West Street and how that whole process went down. And, you know, we had we had a, a big feasibility done, study done. I wasn't even living here at that point. I was in Chicopee, but my went with my mom to some of those uh, some of those meetings. It's the and, same, same you know, thing. It's, so it's not like this is a new issue facing the town of Granby. Like we've been well, it's, sort of living this um, it's, like Groundhog Day, you know, going around and around. Well, it's it's a new issue to the point where people's taxes would increase a lot. So that's and that's reality, and we're still just. We still have an override from our, our previous school, that we did the middle school. So, you know, that's, that's, that's all I'm saying is that, you know, I want to make sure that we're spending the money in the correct area for the town that we're not, you know. I think sometimes it's important that we keep in mind the narrative of we saying that we're building a new school. That is not what we're trying to say. That's not what we're trying to even push for of even getting involved with MSBA. We're not saying knock that building down and let's start from scratch because money grows on trees. That's not what we're trying to say. So I just want to clear that narrative out too. We just know that going through MSBA, they do often cover some of the costs. And we've talked about that before of, you know, if we're going to keep putting our money in or if there's a way that it supports us getting our schools yeah. to where they need to be. And I don't and that, that's not, I hope I'm not steering the narrative as to talk I about just, I feel schools. like we keep saying new school, that's the town if they want a new school. That's I, not but, what we're trying to say, like knock it down, start over. But I, I'm, just, but I'm, I'm just saying for the future of educating our, our students moving forward, what is the direction, what is the best way that we can do that and that we can do it as a town to afford to do that. So, as I said, it, and that is, is it, is it a new school? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. Is it having the high school that we have now spending the money in, in fixing the school up to where we need it to be? Is that the option where we have a plan for the next 10 years, we're gonna start spending money this year, our capital uh, improvement is gonna be the kitchen and the heating system. Next year, the following year, we're gonna look at repairing this or fixing this all up to where it be in the following year. So we, you know, we're, almost remodeling our school, like we remodel a house in stages. Can I ask a uh, clarifying question? So the two capital requests that were voted on, that money has been earmarked for the school for those re for those requests, right? Because the town- yeah, It's been earmarked already for it. Right, so if the subcommittee of two decides that that's not what happens, where does that money go? It stays with the town. So it wouldn't come back to the schools? No. So then my follow-up question to that is, how does that work if there's two people making the decision? Who's the tiebreaker? The vote said at town meeting, I believe, said unanimous. Yeah. Right. So we just got to figure what to do with it. So, so if it's not unanimous, which, you know, then then it goes back. And so then who will report out to the school, to the town? That that went back, and so we have to start over. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, earlier, correct me if I'm wrong. John, John did say that that's something we need to move forward with, and I said the exact same thing. So I think we're both in agreement to to move forward with those projects. With the projects or with meeting? Um, well, I, I think project. it's both because if you, if we're meeting or recognizing the concerns that the school has, and like you said, what was I, I, I just want to make sure we're looking at the the big picture with everything that we're not. As we're going along, we got that big picture in mind. Where do we yeah. look at Granby being? Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't want to live here if my kids couldn't go to school here. Like, so, like, what, what is our future for Granby? Like, that really well, is well, that, be that's the true. But I mean, a lot of towns have they realize, and I'm not kidding, throwing out that they have regionalized high schools and stuff like that, and people love living in the communities that they live in. You have Wolverine with Minichuk, right? People love living in Wolverine. In the areas they live in, people move to certain areas because that's where they want to live. It's just not the schools. Schools have a big part of it. That's also the, the environment. It's a big part of it, without doubt. I'm saying that, but there's also you know the living and the environment and whether they can afford to live in certain towns and things like that. So I have a question. 
and we're talking about the facilities, is this what we do with all the facilities? Like, do we think about, like when we build something, like the security, the library, the new, do we plan out a future of what the expectations are for costs in the future? Because nothing lasts, so everything has to be prepared. So this is what I was going back to. Are we reacting to things, or are we looking at the future and planning what those expected with inflation, what those expected costs are going to be? Well, that's what I'm saying. If we come up with a, a plan with what, you know, you, you have a list of the next five years, these are things that we need to have. Repair, upgrade. No, she's asking about what we Well, we do with this. We, we, uh, so it's like your house. You, you, you put a roof on your I house. Guess. You know it's got a time limit. And, and we do that with the uh, the safety center, the highway department. And fortunately, some of those buildings are still fairly new. Hey, Glenn, we, we did that a few years ago. We put together, I mean, a few years ago, quite a while ago. We put together a 15 year plan. And then we looked at all the capital needs of the town. We looked at buildings, we looked at traveling stock, we looked at everything. And we came up with a basically a 15 year plan and said, here's what it looks like we should be spending if we want to keep things going. And, and we're pretty much we're pretty much following the 15 year plan except for improvement of roads, repair of roads. Can I see but, can you can you send me that plan or can you tell me where it might be? Uh, is it still on the is it still on the uh, website? I'm not sure, Joe. Uh, I'm not sure. If not, I'll mail you a copy of it. That'd be great. Uh, but now, this was 10 years ago? At least. At least. I'm just curious to see like what it says and where we, how we yeah. tracked to it. It was, and what it, time, about the it was at the time when we, we knew we were going to have to be doing a library. Uh, we knew things about the police station. We were going to have to be done. The big thing was big thing was the capital equipment for the highway plan. It was a big, a big piece of the study. And it was done over a period of a number of months. It was done in a scientific way, a detailed study of, uh, based upon past records and projections on it. So, so there was a study that was, the schools were included in that? Uh, the, um, uh, I don't know if the schools were included because of other things, other studies that are going on. So, so that plan. Well, the plan is the plan is now passed. It's I mean, you know, it, it's it's it was a it was a 15 year plan, and really after five years it should have been done again because you can't really plan out 15 years. You know. Those so almost it's almost something that should be done in the town every yeah. five years. So yeah. I mean, again, so you. You're planning for the future. You're making needed repairs and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, you're projecting on how long truck parts last. Right. But were we planning for all town buildings or just some? All town buildings. That was all. Yeah, but I said so. Just because that would paint like a, a full picture. Yeah. So the, I mean, the, the big difference between I know everybody knows is between the highway department building and a school. There's a lot more things that could yeah. happen in the school. But there's still town buildings. I, I'm talking just about upkeep. Right. You know, so the, the, there's a lot more upkeep to a school versus the highway department. The highway department is built is basically a a building with minimal things inside it. For uh, where then you look at the safety center. Well, that's a little bit different. Now there's more things in the safety center that may need to be upgraded as years go along. But again, these buildings are still fairly new. And as long as the maintenance is being kept on the buildings, then that's that's prevent the maintenance. Those buildings should last, you know, as long as we want them to last. And I think, like I said, it's just to uh, get to the point is to say, what do we need for the high school? To get the high school keep on moving forward and and repairs and things like that. If that's the place where it's going to stay, or, and that we're going to stay in the high school, then we start start looking at. We already know two things that got to be repaired this year. And we'll put those on the front burner to make sure those projects are looked at, and we make the necessary, you know, arrangements for those things to be done. So what's what's the following year? What's the couple of years after that? With the understanding that we can't, you know, uh, exceed the 30% value in that three years. So everything falls off in three years. 
So then I think probably next year, then the roof would probably fall off. Right, that's just this about year, that yeah. point. The roof should have fall off this year, right? Because it was done in 2019. Well, it's like it was finished though. So, so, so August of 2022 just went by, right? Yeah. I'll just ask so that's a all. question. So um, I think I'm hearing like some potential next steps, like a meeting and things like that. And like I started saying earlier, like all these things are connected but don't run on parallels. So we just submitted capital requests this past Monday, um, which didn't include the projects that we voted on last year. Um, I think we said last year, we as the school district and school committee recognize that going through capital improvement for those big ticket items is probably not the most fiscally responsible way and we would steer clear of doing that in the future. Um, I think we have two capital improvement requests that we submitted this week for closer to $80,000 versus the two million from last year. Um, what I would ask or what I would ask that you might consider if that vote isn't unanimous to move forward with one of those capital improvements, could we consider putting one of those capital improvements possibly up next year without the caveat, because I believe it was the only capital improvements with that caveat, um, without the caveat to the town. And we could talk about which one it is, which one would make sense, just throwing it out there because again, like now the timelines got. Yep. It's the wind. It's the wind. So I just want, and I don't know if that's even possible, but just. But that's that's fiscal year. We're in fiscal year 23, so that's fiscal year 24. So that's that's the following year, and that's what I'm talking about. Is kind of. Well, what I mean is, it's like if you and John meet and you decide one of you or both of you decide, you know what, it's not in the best interest to do it. Are those capital improvement requests just permanently eliminated? Because we could have put them back on this year if the meeting had happened prior to now and pushed to say, we want them on the article without the caveat that a, a unanimous vote of a two-person subcommittee. So we're looking at, at roughly oh, $2 million. Down. So I think John and I just agree that no, I'd like to ha make sure that happens before January 1. So we move forward. So that gives you, for some reason, it doesn't happen. At least you know, hey, this is what's plan B here. Right. Uh, these are things that need to be taken care of from, for the high school. The town has voted on it. The, the money's been appropriated for that. Um, so, I mean, again, there's just things that need to be done. Again, what will we do? Reality is, is that, uh, you know, tomorrow morning the boiler goes. What are we going to do? Well, we're gonna fix it, right? So it's kind of like those are things that, that need to be done. Is that because like, that that's something that has to be fixed? So I have a question because as you brought up that we did say we would no longer add those because they weren't fiscally responsible to do them as that. But then when projects need to get done to upkeep the school, what is the best way for us to say, hey, this this is really needs to be looked at if it's not a capital improvement plan or if item. So John from the finance committee. So if next year they decide, you know, we really and then just throw things out there. We really need to redo the locker rooms, uh, the bathrooms. It's gonna cost X amount of dollars. How does the school look about how do they go about appropriating those funds? Well, um, but there are there are two groups that look at things. There's the capital improvement committee and there's the finance have different viewpoints. Capital Improvement Committee looks at things, I think, the way you sort of look at things. I and mean, you can say to the Capital Improvement Committee, all these things need to be done to the high school. And the Capital Improvement Committee could say, yeah, we agree, all these things need to be done. So they might approve, let's give a figure, $50 million worth of improvements, say for a second. Capital Improvement Committee has no authority to do any of it. They just look at something and say, this looks like it's a reasonable process. They it looks like this needs to be done. That they have no authority for anything other than that. All right. Then the finance committee at some point, if it's proposed to be in a budget, the finance committee takes a look at it. Finance committee looks at it not from the point of view of 
do these things make sense to be done as projects, but what are the financial implications of doing this? And then the Finance Committee makes a recommendation based upon what it thinks the financial, financial implications are. They say to the town, we don't think you should do this now because of the cost of money and there are other things that need to be done and so on. Or we say, yeah, that looks reasonable for what we have available in the budget for this year. Or it looks reasonable if you're willing to have an override passed to set up to pay for it, but not if we have to take it out of someplace else. Okay. So would that go into the school's normal operating budget? Or would that be? No, it's not in the regular operating budget. They're, they're special. Uh, it's supposed to be a special. Yeah, things that come within the regular operating budget, if their operating budget is approved, and it includes some capital things. I'm supposed to include some small capital things. Uh, well, that's, that's, that's my question. I, I think what you're saying is that what is the um, what is the vehicle for that to get that money being approved? So you, you put on a special. You ask for a special warrant article. Okay. And a special warrant article, and uh, if it's a capital item, then the capital improvement committee is supposed to see it and take a look at it and offer opinion. The finance committee is supposed to see it. And often the opinion that it's ultimately up to select board what goes on the capital So this becomes a, a, an article where the town would vote on a yes or no whether that's the budget to, process. They want to appropriate the money to right. to X amount of dollars. Right. So if I'm understanding this correctly, it's the same way the other departments do it, like when they ask for like a new engine or a new cruiser. It would be the same process, the same process. for the school. Right. Okay. So if it's the same process though, is there can someone just explain where the caveat came from if that wasn't the same process in the other department's capital request? I just don't understand where does that piece come in? Is that specific to just the schools and continuing moving forward? Or is there, I just didn't understand that part. Just I curious. Don't I don't understand the question. On the article. On the actual article itself. Right. Just the, the two schools. Just the school, two items, had that caveat of that um, committee, that subcommittee. Um, even though it went to town meeting and it was voted, no other capital request from any other department had that caveat. So my question, just because we're talking about the process, is where does that piece fall into the process? Is it unique just to the schools? Is it everywhere? Is just, it a threshold? Is it a dollar threshold? Correct. Is it because it exceeded a certain amount? I'm just, it was the first time I've seen it. I mean, and when you think about it that way, Literally, the town voted to approve it. Correct. So why so, does it need a separate two-person unanimous vote? But, but the town did not vote to approve. That's the point. And, and, and I think maybe you ought to look at it this way: is that sometimes things are presented to the town, and they're presented because somebody's got an idea, but it hasn't been fully thought out, or the town doesn't think it's been fully thought out, or the finance committee doesn't think it's been fully thought out, or the finance committee doesn't think it's been, it, been fully thought out. And then the finance committee would say that to the town, and the town would then agree or disagree. Well, I don't remember what happened on the order. Honest to God, I don't remember what happened. But I suspect that what it was is that questions were raised about the cost and the feasibility of how this fit in with other things going on. And then everybody realized, yeah, those are reasonable sorts of questions that somebody ought to answer before we commit to spending this money. And that's all they did. So that's what has to happen, is that answers have to be given. And, before we do so those weren't articles that, though. Right? It's like, it's like there were articles, articles, articles for, for a certain yeah. amount of time. They were with specific dollar amounts. Well, let me ask you a question. Is that suppose an article is on uh, the warrant committee and says, here's what we want to spend, here's what we want to spend it on, and it is subject to an override vote. All right. Now, did the town approve that article or not? No. The town did not approve that article. The town said we approve this article if you could raise the money from this source. So there, there are all sorts of examples of how that's happened. Lots of things we should be over. So right when months. we submitted those articles, the the um, committee wasn't on there. It was added separately, without the school committee or the administration knowing. And it was my understanding that that money was appropriated to the schools was with the final finality of this committee. Well, look, well, but go back and answer that. Go back and say that again now in the context that I just gave you. An article is put on. Our article said one thing, and an the article committee was is, added. An article is proposed at town meeting. Amendments are made to articles of town meetings all the time. Some are approved, some are not approved. The only thing the town votes on is the amended article. 
If an article is amended, it votes on the amended article. Then the original article doesn't make an error as what was proposed. No, no, I, I think as um, before it was, before there was any voting. That's how it was written in the document. It was how it was written in the document. So it, that wording was changed. And the school was the only article that had that caveat, yeah, which yeah. is my question. So I was just curious like, if so it was a money questions. question or if it were. But the school isn't special. The When's the last time we had another caveat um, on caveat web committee? The, the, the absolute biggest one is this. There have been articles that have been proposed subject to an override vote. This isn't an over override vote, but you know that, I No, 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 no. That's that, the point is that the town votes yes. Now, has the town approved the article? No, because the town has approved the article with another addition to the it, caveat. namely that the funding source so caveat is right. it, it Now, on the article right. that you're proposing, somebody amended it and Before said Before telling us. Well, you don't have to be told. That's what the point of town meeting is. You gotta understand we're a town. So yeah, to town people ultimately, have as we talk more about this though, so what I'm hearing now, and I might be wrong, is that this is not going to move forward until after a feasibility, whether it be the Collins Institute or anything else, is done. No, because no, that's no. Not, not that's, the repairs. That's not, it's totally not the, no, no, the repairs. But I do have a question on, what do you mean you no. know? Because no, 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 the no. repairs are, that's a separate from the other feasibility. But if we're not gonna spend the money on the schools until we know if we're spending the money pointlessly, we need to have a feasibility study before we that's, can do that. that but the, this has already been, sorry. This is, yeah, this has already been decided. It's, but he's, he's clarifying that, saying it's not actually been it's decided. It's not actually because decided. Because we have that caveat of the subcommittee of two for a unanimous decision. It's, it's not a, it's not a caveat. It, it is. is. No, it's what was approved in the article. But it was added after. It doesn't what matter when it was added. What I'm saying is, is that you two are going to meet, correct? But what I'm interpreting, and I could be interpreting it wrong, is that there is not going to be any money agreement, unanimous or otherwise made, until there is some sort of study done. No. Well, just this for this purpose, yes. then the study. Or, but no. it's not the study that you're thinking about. No, because we. It's, 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 it's already. It's about. already been. It's I know, been but I have such a taste in my mouth of us doing these studies again, kicking this bucket further the, down the, the road. The, the study is what is for the future. Do you understand what we're yes. saying? What's vetted now is to say that the projects has already been vetted for the kitchen. It's well, it needs to be repaired. The kitchen is now closed. It needs the repairs so the kitchen can operate. Correct. Mm -hmm. So yes. then, why do we need to have the separate so, commission, separate discussion? Let me finish. So then the, we have the boilers. It's something that needs to be repaired, right? If there's something that needs to be replaced, I think there's no question about that. There's already been, I, I know over the years, there's been different companies that have come in and have looked at the, the heating system and explained to us what is going on with it and stuff like that. I remember taking, several years ago, taking a tour of it and showing us different things about the heating system. So I don't think those are a question whether or not you know those are going to be approved or not. That's something John and I will sit down and decide. Okay, what moving forward? And as, as I said, I'd like to have that done by January first. Like to move forward, get this going. So again, we're not in an area where uh, the boiler system is now gone. It doesn't work. And now we're trying to we're scrambling, trying to figure a way to get the kids in school and try to heat the school. What are we going to do now? That's and. I think going forward as we with that piece there I think the future is talking about what is the plans going forward for the school let's let's have that for the whole town really let's have that 10-year picture where do we see the high school in 10 years do we still we see having a new school do we see the realization of the school or do we say hey we have this we have the school we have now let's put the money into it and and that's what I'm talking about a, a feasibility study is it worth it to put X amount of dollars into the building that we have now to get it to you know where it should be moving forward? Are you spending the right amount of money? Are you spending the money in the right areas? I don't. And like I said, my tax dollars. I hate to spend X amount of millions of dollars on a school that we're not going to have. You know, it bothers me to this day that West Street School has a new, brand new roof on it. 
and the roof's only used for a couple of years. I mean, it's still there, the school's still there, and the building's still there, but it's not being utilized. And that's something that we're, as a town, that we're working on now. But it, again, it's just, where, where are we gonna be in 10 years to the school? Is it really that reality is, and I, and I said it before, is a new school. Do we need a new school? I mean, that's, and that, that's I think that's part of the job the school can need too, is that for the future. Do you, do you think they're gonna need a new high school down the road? Or is it the things that we can do for high school now that can repair it down the road, keep it going so the, whole, the school can be there for another 20 years? That's what we can afford, what the town can afford that for the future. We gotta, we gotta plan for the future because who knows, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, sooner or later, if the town reaches its ceiling as far as taxing and stuff like that, where are we gonna be? And then we look at overrides. Overrides don't pass, where are we gonna be? It's kind of just kind of getting us prepared so we're not, you know, like some places, those things happen, it's like, oh no, what are we gonna do now? I, I do Trying to avoid that. When we're talking about um, like the kitchen, and I'm just going towards part of one of the grants, if I'm trying to understand or remember correctly, was supposed to pay for part of that. <coughs> is that still possible? Because I know that grant is coming to an end. You switched it from a grant to uh, like a reserve account for the food services that can only be used for specific for food services, for food services so the kitchen would be allowable. So the funds that were originally set aside to help with the cost is now sitting somewhere else, but would still be able to be used it's, it's in the food to services help. Account, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to understand because I know the grants and yeah. I know. 200,000, I think. Yep. So and I know they're coming to an end, so I just wanted to make sure that those would still be available if it was decided. The funding is put through a different source. Okay. Hey, can, can I speak for a second? Of course. John, I think the school, your frustration right now is what happened at that town meeting where we approved money for the gym, locker rooms, kitchen, and the boiler system. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, not the boiler system. The, it's there wasn't the any. gym and locker. Uh, gym. Locker room and the kitchen. And, and that was like HVAC a million and, and a half or something to get that all fixed up. And the cafeteria was involved in it too. Yeah. Like a half a million or something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah it was two so, projects. So, yeah. So, the question I have, John, why the town approved that, correct? And, or if, did somehow this if caveat the came in that? subcommittee approves it, the town approves it. So, that's the, the caveat now the two person yep. committee's got to get involved in something that the town members approve? Town members approved it with that, with that language, that so that's good. what the town members approved. There was no yeah. other alternative to approve without that caveat. Well, we could have amended the article, is what John is sharing, too. Oh, it was amended, though, to have that caveat, if I, if I remember no, right. No, it was written that way. It was written that way? That wasn't but how we submitted it. when we submitted, submitted it, it to when it ended up in the booklet, booklet it was amended. You submitted it with the caveat or no, not with the caveat? Without. So then that caveat and afterwards that the town meeting didn't know about. Well, no, no, by the time way. it got to town, so yeah. how I don't understand it. Oh, so the time it got to town meeting, there was yes. a it was in there. that was okay. submitted to be requested as a capital improvement. When it got to print, that's when that additional language was. When submitted. it went in front of the. Correct. Town and that when the town read it, that language was already there, so it had been amended prior to the town reviewing the original. So the That's frustration, and I get the frustration, is you want something to get going here instead of t getting tied up in committees all the time. Right. Well, not even that, though. It's just further this discussion. I feel like it's being shared that there's not going to be anything done to the building or not wanting to get that kind of project done until there's some sort of feasibility study done. I'm not getting that sense. I'm not either. No, that's uh, that's not what that's not what I was saying at, at all. Uh, I'm saying well, I think we need to sorry, have an answer sorry is, is to start looking at the repairs that were were passed at the town meeting but also looking for the future, what needs to be done for the school. And okay. that's why I said a feasibility study. Well, that would be part B. 
this part or days it, as to this what you, to, if if again if the thought and the idea is to build a new school then i want to make sure that we don't ever make that value a 30 percent thing where we hit the, the trigger that kind of throws us into a, a spin mm -hmm. that's what i want so you know we gotta find out right so is. first things first we want to we want to make sure we take care of the projects that you know that were you know looked at and reviewed at a town meeting and approved so we can get going on those things so that so sort of to better. circle back to stephanie's original question is how many other committees of two decisions do you have on capital improvement warrant articles that pass i don't think i i, I, I don't think of any right now can i make a suggestion i think as much as we'd love to stay here and talk about this all night i wonder if we can identify some I don't know why you think that steve like <laughs> concrete next steps i've heard a couple but like concrete if john and glenn are going to meet in the next month if we're going to have a monthly meeting or bi-monthly meeting who's responsible for what like i think we need to have concrete next steps in order to move this forward because otherwise oh. and i understand in some ways but well, i might not agree with it i'm not blaming anyone that it went seven months like i said to jen when it got passed said let's like give the summer let's see what they do let's give the summer let's not like that i said to jen and now i feel like i said to my chair something that maybe we should have said something sooner to get the ball rolling because so, i was all on it i was like all right i want to know when's yeah. the meeting going to be posted and you yeah. know and, and in all fairness we did we did we, we did start talking about this in september and i know we ended up scheduling a meeting for october, october. i was unable to make the meeting because of a an illness and the death of my family so uh, here here we are today so yeah. fortunately it would have been great if we would have met a few months ago yeah. and to your point steve you know what that's the past i want to i want to move forward i want to get to where we need to be and i said you know and i say that now that i want to have something in place by january 1st john and i will meet we'll come up with a, a plan a decision and that's what i'm saying as we talk about and i think this is a good thing as we talk about um you know you know budgets and things like that we have you know we found that that worked out well last year with uh, uh, part of this the select board the school committee and the finance committee meeting as far as a budget i and i'm thinking that would be a nice piece to have moving forward with the school because obviously that's a big part of granting so why not have the if you will the stakeholders which is the school committee uh, the finance committee and the select board um, look at moving forward two of the one of the board one of the committees are elected you know positions i think it's important for us to, to kind of okay where are we going to be let's keep on moving forward if it if it is moving forward with repairing the school that we have now let's keep on moving that way if it's talking about building a new school let's keep on moving that way if it's regionalization then let's think about moving that way right we got we got to figure out what direction we want to go in and we got to start heading that way so your subcommittee meeting, you guys will discuss, and that'll be posted, so we know we can. It's not a subcommittee. It's not a subcommittee. I thought the wording in the um, in the warrant says it's a subcommittee. Yeah. The two committees have to meet. No, 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 it's no, your, it's, your, it's, your well, first, it's the two of there, you. If there are more than, if there are anybody other than Glenn from the select board, no, it said a subcommittee. A, the warrant the, article uh, itself said it a subcommittee, which means that it needs to be posted. I'll, I'll follow up on it, whether or not it's going to be posted. And then obviously, if it does need to be posted, that's what, exactly what we'll do. So we'll, we'll follow up on that, um, whether or not. Because, because I think by right that point, I don't know that any of us can predict what's going to happen. I think the two of you are going to have a conversation. But if we meet on January 2nd, we're going to know whether those two articles are moving forward whether one's moving forward whether neither are moving forward and we can you could you could help out some have you um do you have available any studies that you've done about what the needs are in the school's capital needs you, the one that we sent to you the facilities assessment well i'm sure the last time the high school was looked at there would be probably information from even then right that would yeah, list the concerns 2011, but it's some too bad if, if, to if clarify. you're talking about planning better right i mean that's kind of what we're talking about mm -hmm. so can the school predict 
This system is two years old. This system is 22 years old. This one is, if we looked into the future, what's going to, you know, what are we going to need? And yeah. how do we put well, puzzle it together to stay within we the rules that you. we're not sure? Yep, yeah. and we yeah. said that to John and Glenn and before we were supposed to meet in October, a facilities assessment. Yeah. So the chairs, right? Yeah. We'll share it with their yeah. So, so we said that, again, that was the one I mentioned before, that we did that internally. So full disclosure, we did that internally. But, and to your point, it didn't say like, when the boiler was put in or whatever, but it addressed like what the issue that we experienced with the boilers on an annual basis. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm, and that's what I'm really talking about as we move forward is the, the real part of it, what are the needs? We have the information, the documentation to back yeah. up what our needs are moving forward. And then we talk about, you know, what needs to come up at town meeting. Well, the school is has an article and a warrant. They're asking for X amount of dollars to fix this or, up, or um, update this particular area. Why? This is why. Same reason why the, the police department says, why do you need a new vehicle? The chief speaks to it. Well, this is why I believe we need new, a new cruiser for this year. Same thing with the fire department. So I think it's the same thing. Well, then it's, it's voted on and it's over and done with. And when we, before we submitted it to you, we did talk about it in one of our meetings too, and even made sure that we added a few things, like you know that it was on, like if it was submitted as a concern in the past, what year it was that we did it, whether mm -hmm. anything was done about it. If not, okay, then why did we not submit it the following year? Because we did, like, it's all spread yeah. out. It's probably, we were figuring more. I was like, rather just say more so that the history is all there. You look at this and you know what the history is. So it's all in that document. Well, that's the biggest thing, I, but I don't approve the money. Uh, the yeah. town does, that's why, yep. and, and, and I was glad to hear John, John, it clarified it as well as how to get the certain funding that you would need for that. It's not part of the regular budget. It's it's an article. It's a warrant to get things just like anybody else. Does. So I think that's good to hear that at least for myself too. Is that knowing going forward that if you do need certain that's then the town hears it and they say yes, the town approves you know five hundred thousand dollars to repair this for the school and, and the finance committee and. It, like any other thing, if they tell you whether or not they feel it's a good piece for the school, a good piece for the town, if the town can afford it. I would imagine the same thing if the, the and I'm just throwing things out there, if, they, if the, the fire department, fire chief came up and said, look, we need a new uh, fire engine. Well, you just got two in the past six years. That's not a, that's not a wise decision to make, no. I would imagine the finance committee would say, no, we don't, we don't feel that's appropriate for the, the town to spend three hundred thousand dollars on new fire engine. Yep. And I guess, and I'm just saying, that the, it's a street sweeper, right? The the the, the, the the finance committee basically is recommending to the town what they feel is appropriate for the town to spend money moving forward, because we make sure that the, the town has money, not just for next year, but the year after that, year after that. And I I can tell you, talking to other selectmen in different areas. <coughs> Randy's doing okay, considering that how we are doing with you know our um, our, our money and our accounts and stuff like that. Okay. And, and the, the thing is that reality is coming soon. And if, you, if everybody watches the news, you hear what's happening and things like that. And they're talking about eventually in recession. Whether it happens or not, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not that person to ask, but I can all I can tell you is what I what I hear and listen to the news and things like that. So it's preparing for the future. Like anything, so do you I want think. Me to forward you that facilities thing that we sent, and um, do you want me to re-forward it to everybody? I've just found it in my email, so it just went to John and Glenn, but I can forward it to. So how, how far? Yeah, please. How far out is it? How far? Out? It's just a general. So it talks about the state, uh, like the building envelope. It talks about the boiler system. Yeah. It talks about the grounds and. So the electrical it, panel. Does it give you a flavor of how, in in the commercial world, there's depreciation? You buy an asset, and then it says this is a 15-year asset, and at the end of 15 years, you're going to need another. So 
Yeah, I don't know if it gets to that level of detail, but I, I'm certainly I, open to any feedback. If there's things that we, more information that we can provide, happy to do it. The intention of that document was just to say, like, these are the needs of the junior senior high school, so we're kind of all working from the same document rather than, oh, here's two capital improvement requests this year, and then here's two more next year, right? So we're all working kind of from the same plan. plan. So that was the intention. Sounds good. So, awesome. but if it, I have open to any feedback. Adding stuff with East Meadow as needed too in the future because oh, so again, yeah. you don't want to wait. East Meadow is in a wonderful condition, but there are things that you're going to have to make sure you're staying on top of because that's just part of building maintenance. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, I hear what you're saying about depreciation, a 15 year, 20 year, but sometimes those last longer. My thing is if how I look at it is if we're always purchasing a big item, we know depreciation value is five years, but we don't technically have to replace it until 10 or 15 years comes up. What are the costs each year to maintain it to get it to that 15 years? And in 15 years, what is the expectation of a cost of a new item? So those, that's why I'm always thinking, how are we thinking ahead? Because I'm not just thinking schools everything this community has multiple pieces to it and in order for us to work together we have to keep everybody moving in one motion and it's fiscally responsible and maintaining items that we know are going to wear out and similarly to that if there's another department that has a running list of something that you're like oh this works really well i think it'd be great to share with us if they're like Stephen said we're open to feedback but if you guys have like hey you know this department gives us this and it's really helpful to track that would just be great to share and like i said the school is so much different than other the building it's just so many different facets to the school it's the building itself that other buildings just don't have you know and so uh, you know the, the other buildings don't have you know 300 students going through it every single day in the you know I don't know, 75 employees and things like that. So it's different. Um, but again, I think I, what I really want to take from this meeting is to focus on the capital um, improvements that the school is in need of now. You get that taken care of, moving forward on that. The next thing's coming down the road. And that's why I'm talking about we can have, you can have bi weekly meetings, and I imagine we're going to come together in the near future anyways to talk about the budget so you know have these meetings that are continuously the information going forward and things like that so it's just not you know it, it, again it's like everybody together as we talked about and maybe it's something that you know it's just not the select board has the same thing so the select board the other buildings to get so the fire the, the safety center at the uh, the, the, this building here, the um, the highway department, the X building, they all fall under this board in a roundabout way because we appoint the chiefs in both areas, we hire the superintendent of the highway department, so they, the school committee operates the school. So we don't operate the school, the town does, but the school committee is it really, so that's, that's the, the difference between some of the other things. So when the, when, when the uh, and, I, and I know I'll go, you know this as well, the, the other town, the other town departments that fall under the, the select board, they bring the budgets to us. The budgets are reviewed and reviewed by the finance committee. And if, then they go to, to the town. Yours is a little different because you have, you create your own budget as the, as the uh, school committee where the other people you know, Chris was reach out to the, the chief, say, okay, we can maybe look at this year, afford uh, a two percent increase across the board, and that may be just cost. That may just cover the increase of what the town is spending on certain things. So it just basically gets us to the following year. The so things are a little bit different when you compare. You can't really get, compare departments to departments because the school department has its own committee that oversees it. Right. I think it's important that you can't compare, but you can definitely collaborate and we can definitely be all, you know, it is one town, 
I think all departments obviously are important and equally so and we should just yeah. I was more saying that if there was something in general it would be helpful just so that you know even though because we do do things differently that you know we're still yeah. are you know I think that we've tried really hard to you know open that communication and be more I'm sure when's our meeting we were just going to bring that up December 12th December 12th 13th 13th, 13th. <laughs> You want to talk about it? Um, so, I just, it's Scott, right? Right. Okay. Um, and then, Jen, I need a new email for you because I don't think your Grammy Schools one is still active. No. So, just text that to me. Okay. Um, John, I'll send it to you again so it'll be further up in your email. Bob, do you want me to send it to you as well? Sure. Okay. And then, um, George, I'm sending it to you because I don't see you. Yeah, um, I was, that was after, or before I was. Okay. So I'm just, I'm not putting anything in. I'm just forwarding it to everybody um, that I just mentioned. Bob, John, Scott, Rick, George, Jen, you'll send me yours, and I'll forward it to you again. And Joe Frogan. Oh, is he still on? Yes. Okay. I thought he, um, someone had told me I thought he moved. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm forwarding that right now. So you all have that um, assessment. Do you want to speak to the budget calendar real quick? Oh, sure. Let me see if I can find it. Nice. Yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba. So, just go over the whole thing? No, I mean, just what's probably So, we're having them. our public forum on um, Tuesday, December 13th. Um, it doesn't say where, but I, I assume it's going to be in East Meadow. Yes, yeah, it's before our meeting. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yes, six p.m. And it's right before our school committee meeting. So that will be talking about the process and how we're um, looking at building it out and just try to get people involved. The next one is um, tentatively scheduled for Tuesday, February 14th, the same at six o'clock. And then the third one the is all Tuesdays. Okay. Tuesdays, February 14th. We can all have a nice Valentine's Day date. We may we may reschedule that one. At the school committee. Um, <laughs> well, we're red, we're pink or something. We'll look lovely. Um, uh, the best offer for bird. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Tuesday, March 28th, will be um, the formal, the, the presentation of the budget to the school committee in public forum and then we will be voting on our school committee the school committee will vote on Tuesday April 11th those dates are subject to change but that's what we have right now so we hope that you'll all come on the 13th for the public forum it's question and answer discussion um, it's not a standard meeting right it's just open 30 minutes discussion on the budget and the process and all are welcome so next steps. Back to next steps. I have written down, John and Glenn will meet this month. Have a plan by January 1st. Anything else? Um, I think, I don't know that it's the Collins Center, right? Like, I think we've talked to them, but is that one of the next steps to do some research about who I, might conduct a study like John's talking about or that's being suggested? Collins Center might be one of the places that we look. I just wonder. Right. And I, I would think too, and I, I'm, I'm really I'm speaking for the school committee and the select board because we are elected officials for the town. So looking at what what should be the next step, I think, and that's again, is should we have a feasibility study at something? What should that include? What are we looking for to move forward for the town? And you know, in this particular, it's the school. So as far as the schools, what are we looking to move forward with it? And I said, it is it a new high school? Is it spending money in our current school, high school now, and renovating that and getting that to where we feel is you know is for the future for our, our children and our students, um, or is uh, re re I get this word realization really? We know what you're saying. You got yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to talk, about it. but after talking for a while. You know what? Are, what are the that's a thing for the future. That's that's that to me. That's one of our jobs as elected official, and then there's like planning for the future. So you know, 
what is that in detail? That's why I said it. At, at some point, we get it. Huh? Do we know the place that offers these options? Well, we, 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 could, we, we, we could find it. I mean, there's places out there that do studies, and it's willing whether or not, you know, deciding where we want to go, what we want to do, and it's reaching out, okay, what is something like this going to cost the town for a study? And we have twenty thousand dollars earmarked, right? right? But that's I'm not talking about that. I'm well, talking about. I would about more think of like, future. okay, if we want to find a place and take that next step by March. Like I like to have like more like and a I, time okay, so, schedule in place, so, you know. And with that same philosophy is that can we get to a point where we kind of look to where we're going for the future? So at the town meeting in May, you know, we kind of have an idea. We may be able to say, yes, we're looking at doing a feasibility study on A, B, and C. And we understand it may cost us this. And what are we doing this for? It's for the future so we can decide what is the best option for the town. A lot of things, what can the town afford? What is the, that's one of the big areas. And what is the best thing that we can provide an education for our students? Is also the other part, you know, the most important part too. So, kind of thinking about those things moving forward. That's what we, you know, I don't want to pigeonhole us into a, a certain thing. For and it's just my feeling on it, and more speaking as a, a resident, I like to know what the future for Granby is going to be, because where is that going to happen down the road? As far as what is the plan? If you, you know. If and I was speaking with John and John was talking about it, if an override isn't reality, then we shouldn't be talking about a new school. And, and I'm not saying whether we are or not, but we need we need the plan because we, we're talking about those concerns with the high school. So when when do we involve the planning committee, the planning board? The, the planning board is not part of that. Okay. The, the the planning board is not part of. The, that part of planning for the future at this I mean as far as the school we're well, looking so we're just looking at addressing the school the of like they help plan and bring in hopefully more revenue to right. the town to help to fund yeah. like that right well like, Grandy is nothing's changed in the past almost 30 years that I've been here that doesn't mean it's right it, it doesn't mean it's right <laughs> nor but I can, nor does the infrastructure or anything else support something to change in the, in, the, in the near future. And by the near future, I mean the next five to 10 years. It's a, it's a bedroom community that's built on that, and that's the, the burden of the taxes fall on homeowners. Some people, that's what they like about the community. Some people don't like that about the community because of the burden of the tax money falls on residential. You don't have a lot of commercial. We don't have a lot of businesses in Granby. One reason why our, our tax rate is the same for commercial and residential. It's the same. However, if, if you look around town, you see people building homes and they're building bigger homes. So there must be a reason why people are doing those things and making that type of investment. There's reasons behind it. I think, you know, over the past, um, probably past two years, I think there's four new houses that have been built on Morgan Street. There's actually a new one that's going up now on the other side of Morgan Street. So there's a reason why people are moving to Granby and they're building homes. Not just people buying in Granby, but are moving in and building. Those, there's, there's reasons why. So, um, you know, those are things to, to think about too. And, and I know people, it's well known. I mean, there's certain things that we need to look at as far as our tax base too, because many years ago we lost a lot of money on our tax roll for uh, Westover, and when they they bought up all those houses and tore them down, all that money came off our our tax roll. And I was actually going to you know, eventually talk to Chris about that. And see where we would have been today if all those houses were still on our tax roll versus where we are now. And I'm almost positive that even the number of houses that have been built in Granby in the past 10 years, having a couple close to the amount of houses that have gone the other way. Yeah, because I live over there, and it's all gone. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's fenced off. It's, yeah. And then there's the um, solar power. So, yeah. yeah. So you talking about when you have... Side streets and everything. You have houses over there that brought in you know, 
you had houses that are, you know, died at two, three hundred thousand dollars, you're bringing in, you know, several thousand between, you know, three and four thousand dollars a year in tax revenue. And you take 50, 75, 100 houses off the tax roll. That's a lot of money for a small town. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and as I said, over the years, we've been doing fairly well. We've also lost our uh, landfill and our tipping fees. So over the past, you know, if you really look at it, over the past 10 years, Granby's been hit with some things as far as financially that we've lost money or lost, lost revenue from previous years. But I can see why but we're Jen, still moving forward though. Right, but I can see why Jen would then say, if we're making a plan of what does the future of Granby look like, that then that does involve the planning board too, right? No, because the planning board doesn't, I mean, the planning board as far, I, I guess, what are, you, yeah, what are you looking at for that? It's different them? between towns and cities. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking of a city, and this, we're not a city, we're a town. Yeah. All, all of these operations are completely independent of one another. And so that's why you have to look to the select board to decide what's going on in the town. The, the select board are not in charge of the planning board. The planning board and the I'm not saying board. someone in charge of the other. I'm saying working together. Well, my my well, communication. So while the select board, everybody comes to, and do you get reports from everybody to see what's going on? Because the communication, then how do we make dis decisions as a community if nobody's communicating? Well, I, I guess what kind of communication I'm looking for? So the planning board, I guess, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, maybe a lot, was they had a master plan for the town. What they saw what was beneficial for the town. And they started, to, they brought it to town meeting. They started changing some of the zoning areas as far as residential to, to business and overlay and stuff like that, which is talked about, moving to the future. I would think that the master plan is probably something that needs to be revisited again. It's sorry that, but it's probably that time. And that's something so that that's what I'm the saying. planning board I thought the planning board was in charge of the master plan. Well, they are, but we that's up to them to start looking at it again. They, they probably are at this point, I don't know. So, well that's, so that's sort of my point in a very roundabout way, is that if we're gonna be talking about things that are for the future of Granby as these committees get together, it feels like planning board should have a seat at the table, the proverbial table, when we're talking about that. Because if they're looking at things, like it's all, it's all part of the same. You're when they thinking of a city, you're not thinking of a town. When they decide to do a master plan, it's just it's what benefits. How can it benefit the town? As we a have a set of bylaws yeah. that run the town. And within the set of bylaws, it says what the responsibilities of all these different elected people are. But there's no requirement that anybody work together. Well, I mean, I understand, I understand it's and, not written down, but do don't that, you see the benefit of it? That, if you want to do that, you have to change the structure of the town and change it into a city. So, we're, so essentially you're saying we're violating a bylaw right now, so we shouldn't be doing it? No, uh, no, here's here's my that. thing. I understand what you're saying. Everybody has a role. Each, each committee has their own separate goals that the community has to meet. But then, how do we, as a citizen, or how do I vote on something if nobody's communicating out to us? You have a great responsibility because you're a voter in the town, you're a resident of the town. Correct. But take an example. Suppose that the um, suppose that the town clerk wants to do something. The town clerk has a right to come to the town meeting and propose whatever it is yep. he or she wants to propose, and the town meeting has the right to set that. Now suppose the clerk comes and wants a proposal for three million dollars for some project and the planning board is against it. Well, who cares if the planning board is against it? The town gets to decide who's in charge of what by allocating the money. So the town can say no to the planning board, we don't want you involved with this, yes to the clerk because we do want you involved with it. Or they could do the exact opposite, say no, we like the planning board better. But that's not the choice of either the planning board or the town clerk. Correct. It's only the town meeting that does that. Correct, and I 100% agree and, with and, that. And that's, that's why you gotta be very, very careful about thinking about requiring different groups to work together. You can't do that. You cannot do that. You can hope that it happens, you cannot require it. Well, I think that's what Jen was saying. I think she's hoping that it would happen. I wasn't yes. trying to require anything. She's, hope, she's hoping it would happen. My spin on the planning board is that, you know, they're maybe deciding between commercial and, and residential zoning areas, right. but they really don't have a, they're not involved with the quote master plan that 
something we were all kind of talking about. Except that he said that they well, the, 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 the plan a, board, a, a piece of, the plan board has a, right? a, a good piece of the, the, of the um, but master if, plan. But, but, if, but if we're already kind of trending off into this, right, you know, residential. Well, what, what, right, but, and what I'm saying is that reality is that the planning board's not going to have anything that they can see that how it's going to increase revenue for the schools, not for the school, for the town. Where we can do different things. They they've looked. I mean, they looked at that, and that was part of the master plan back when I said. And and that's part of the. I think I believe that's in the bylaws actually. And that's one of the areas they came up with that was about zoning. How can we increase the app, the, the availability to people for different uh, businesses and things like that in town? So as far as an action plan for here for now. You, uh, oh, no, Glenn you like and John are going to meet, but my question is, who's taking the responsibility as far as reaching out or um, as to someone about this feasibility study? So that that is that going to happen? Who's who's going to lead that? Is my question. Well, my so that's my my thought process is that that's why this committee or this group meets again to say what what are the needs, and I think as a group we should come together. Again, you, 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 have, uh, you have all the players at the table. You have the school committee, you have the select board, and you have the finance committee. And I think moving that forward as to what the school is going to need for the future. And that's what it, when a feasibility study is where we, I think we need to decide, and mostly you, but I think with the help of us, but is what the school needs moving forward. And that's why I said, what, what is... But with, with all due respect, it sounded like you kind of flushed out like the three options to look at. Like, is there a regionalization option? Is there a kind of stay put and either remodel or rebuild option that could be something that we looked at and what are the costs around that? Or is there a temporary like kind of option in terms of like what that looks like for how, I mean, that was not my words, but in terms of like housing students in a different creative capacity. So those were options A, B, and C that I heard. So we know what students need on like a day-to-day -day basis, year to year, in terms of like building structure. And of course the people that are there are the ones that provide it. I'm not sure what else we need in order to move forward with the study that everyone else is looking for. I, I don't think we need a lot more, I, and I, that's why the, the, the A, B, and C kind of those are like are, are what our real you know, options you know are. Building the best, right? right. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about building. And, and so excuse me, Brent, we do not have what you just said. We do not have three options. We have no options right now. We have no options. The point of getting the study done is to give the town what its options are. So what we're asking though is. Um, Who's going to do? Who's going to do this? Who's going to look into doing the study and hopefully? Right. Well, I, 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 John, I, I just agree with it because I, I think when we look for someone to do the feasibility study, we need to have an idea of what direction we we want them to look at. Yeah, it's set up. It's a select board study. We we put it on just like the finance committee has no responsibilities. So we put it on I guess as I a select it was board subcommittee. No, we put it on a select board study and recommend that the town fund the select board study. So the select board is going to have to be in charge, but they're in charge of the town. Mm -hmm. And they, I think, would ask finance committee, would ask the school committee, would ask anybody else that they think has an interest in this, of the kinds of things that ought to be considered by the study. And that would give you, that would give them enough background then to put together a package to talk to some consultants on what they need to do Consultants will have their own idea of what was missed. Right. What was, I mean, there's nobody here in the town with this kind of expertise. So that's the twenty thousand dollars that was added to the to their budget. And respectfully, I was just asking who's leading that because I think we here we talk about those things. We've talked to death, uh, to be honest, the options with the high school. So I think that if you ask any one of us right now with some of those options, we'd tell you today. Like I can say confidently. I think we've already talked regionalization, you know. Give, give me one one example. Of what? Of when we've... That we'd have to do the study on. I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but... Regionalization 7 through 12 or regionalization 10, 11, and 12? Why? Regionalization 9 through Why? 12 were brought up earlier. Why? 
You, you studied all those? Yes. No, 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 no. No. She's saying what, but, what could but, be but, studied. Right, but, but here's the question is right. why, right. why are we going to, so when we go to town and ask for to appropriate money that we need to do the study, well, why? Because this is why. This is, like you said, because we feel that, you know, what we want to know what's going to cost us to do this, what's it's going to cost us to do this, so, what's going to so cost us to do this. I feel like so we've already forward. flushed that out, yeah, that's though. The, that's I the line. We want to have that I information so we can present I, it to I the town. But that's what I'm saying. We have to, we have, so we have, have, to have as a group to present that to As the, the chair, I, like, I'm pretty confident that the school committee wouldn't be asking town to spend Correct. money on that. To do a, 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 a study on... Shipping our kids out. Yeah, like we've already, that's what I was saying. We've already had those conversations in great length for. Well, I'm, so, I'm so all for entertaining it's the not the idea, option, then guess, what like, are your options? You bring that up at town meeting. Like, we'd like to have a study to decide whether or not so, we'd like to do this, this, or this. Like, what if people are like, I don't want but, to but, have my kids uh, not be here, so I'm not going to vote. No, the town is going to, excuse me, the town is going to look at something that the town can do financially down the road. And like I said, it, we're, we're talking about a building. It's either continuing the building that we're in, replace the building, or abandon the building. Those are, and, we, and that's where you talk about moving on to something different. And I, I'm just saying that, because those are, those are things that the town, we got, we got to decide moving forward what we want to do. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And they present that to the town saying, well, if we do this, this is going to cost X amount of dollars. If we do something like this, it could cost X amount of dollars. If we do something like this, it costs X amount of dollars. That's why we want a feasibility study so we can we can give figures to the town. The town needs to decide whether or not they're willing to spend money on building a new school, spending money on renovating the school, and if we can't. But I'm saying, leaving this meeting right now, do you want to bring up to the town those three options? But who are we going to reach out to to get to that spot? Do what I am right. What I'm asking to get to that is that if that's something that these these boards together and committees together feel is something that we should be looking at, then we need to look at figure out what a dollar figure we'd have to attach to that to a firm that would have an idea of what would it cost us to do something like that, and bring that to the town saying we're going to need X amount of dollars to do a feasibility study. The feasibility study will be able to help us out with the future of the high school. These are some of the things that we're looking at. We're gonna ask that in the feasibility study, they look at. Can, can I say one thing on this? Just because I I know we all have our kind of strong opinions on, on all of these things based on the conversations we have on a regular basis. However, we are constantly kind of, as a committee, we are constantly kind of coming up against the same kind of conversations about well what about this well what about that well you haven't done this in the right way or you're not qualified to do this in the right way and you haven't asked the right questions so i think in order to kind of know what direction to go in and have somebody that is quote unquote extremely qualified and not amateur to kind of lead that I think it would make sense to figure out exactly what we need to do in order to kind of progress in the right direction. And regardless of our own kind of discussions and feelings, I don't know that we have anything in addition to kind of add about what we're looking for. So I think that's where we're getting hung up, or at least I am. But I think to kind of move it forward to give the town that option of like, can we move forward with this study and what does this look like? I think that would help kind of put all the other, well, have you done this, or what about this, or what about that, that piece to rest. But we had already said, there's already been voted on at the last meeting, $20,000 for that purpose. Well, that is it not. It was added to the select board budget I, for a study. I can honestly say that's not enough, just based on the conversation. Yeah. Tonight, no, not we really we specifically put that in as just kind of a seed money. Yeah. Because the kinds of things you're talking about are exactly right. We do not know what this is going to entail. We know it needs to be done, but we do not know what it's going to cost. We we'll put some money in there just so that there would be some way to get started on this process. So we have. Go ahead, Jen. I just I feel like this is Groundhog Day. We're just talking in a circle. What is the plan? If we have the beginning of twenty thousand and we need more, 
I mean, you can't you can't spend more. But that's what I mean. So that, okay. But, but, no, but, no, but, we have to ask for it. Right. That's what I'm saying. So when we so go to town to we ask, need, town, we, get, we need to know what we want so we, you can ask for additional money to do it. Twenty and you get some kind of template. A profit yeah, study. More, something's more solid to support? ask the town. Or for even the rest at that point, you're reaching out to someone and getting estimates like it's going to cost this much to have this particular study done. That's what we we reach out to different firms and ask. What is a, a ball? Can you give just like anything we do? Is there a ballpark figure you can give us what a study would cost? Based on what you just told us, yes, your study is going to probably cost you around seventy-five to hundred thousand dollars. And verify okay. that it's going to. And then we go to the town. The answers we're looking for. Well, that's well, yeah, that's what we're gonna, that's what we're, so we're paying someone to give us the answers that we're looking for. If we could come up with a plan that we all agree on and cost a hundred thousand dollars, sign me up. So that it's not, I mean, we can agree on it, but ultimately it's not the community choice. has to agree on well, it. Right. right. But that's what the study is going to do is we'll basically give the. $100,000 for the plan. Could be. Well, and that hundred thousand dollars saves you X amount of dollars right. down the road. And, so. and we're also just throwing stops, out that number. Like it could be. We have no idea. But it stops this. I would imagine. Yeah, I, it I'm stops this we have kind yeah. of conversation yeah. back and forth. So what do we need for is. to stop this? We need that. Like specifically, that I'm not being yeah. facetious. No. Like specifically, what do we need? Well, so this actually stopped about an hour ago. It just continued <laughs> for some reason. So, so the last, I thought we were actually done like 40 minutes ago. The last feasibility studies that we have are, are no longer valid. That cost several hundred thousand dollars. I, I, for what we want to do, I don't think that's why no, that, and that's just based on a couple numbers that were thrown out here when someone mentioned with the Collins group, what's going to do a study was roughly $14,000 just to kind of talk about. That was specifically that for was specifically, right. Right, so you're talking about $14,000 just to do that. So if we're talking about other options as well, we need to, and we, you know, the, the select board can task Chris with that to look out and find out what is what is the a number that would be a real number that we can operate with. And that's what we need to bring to town meeting to appropriate X amount of dollars for a feasibility study so we can decide A, B, and C moving forward for the future for the school. We're planning, we, what we're trying to do now is plan for the future for the school and what the best option for the town is. So at that point, the town may say, yes, you have the authority to spend X amount of dollars. Go do your feasibility study. We would do that. We get all the information and then we look at what our information is that's provided and then you bring that back to the town with a recommendation. So if the recommendation, never mind, I'm not gonna. But, 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 that's, but that's the process how, it's, how, how it works. So I, I understand that. I'm just thinking of past feasibility studies that we've had for two past building projects and then we ended, ultimately ended up building on the third. We, like those feasibility studies say things that the town didn't want to hear. So we spent a bunch of money that we couldn't have, you know, we ended up not being able to afford and didn't do. But that's why you are paying quote unquote experts to give, so, uh, give so us the information so we can move forward. I don't know how long we've been on the, on the school committee, but th this, was, this is one of the most disappointing things that ever happened, as far as I'm concerned, with the school, the school committee. The school committee years and years ago had sent in these, uh, these uh, assessments to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. And they said very, very clearly that the number one, the number one problem in Granby, our number one priority is to fix up or replace or do something with West Street School. That was said over and over again. It's in writing. It's in the reports that were sent out. It's the number one priority. So what did the school committee do? The school committee went and asked for rebuilding high school. That was, that was the big project that was turned down the first one years and years ago. It was for a campus, though, for both. I mean, both buildings were going to be redone. It was going the to be. The school committee, on one hand, sent to the MSBA, our number one priority is this. They looked at all the schools. The number one priority is this take care of West Street School. What did the school committee do? Send in a proposal to so, build a new high school. All right, so just, that's an interrupt. I, I know that we, and respectful, that. we could probably stay here all night having conversations. We're respectful for everybody's time. I think we, we talked about what we want to do. John and I are going to get together, and we're going to have a decision and move forward by January 1. 
Uh, When's our next meeting going to be then? So will you reach out? I'll reach out and we'll, have, we'll schedule uh, another meeting. For January? Sometime in January. And then we'll then we'll start talking about the future. Let's let's get these two things, these two items situated, figured out. Let's get those moving and let's talk about the future of the schools. What's the best option that we feel that we can be presented to the town? And it's going to take time. It should take time. Okay, just a quick question I found this. Would it make sense for all three boards to come to that next meeting with a list of things they would like to see done as part of that feasibility study? Because yeah. then, whether it's yes. I'm tasked with it, or Chris is tasked with it, or whoever yes. is tasked with it, then they can start reaching out to Collins yes. Center, other people, so yes. we're at the 2020 about two different projects. Yeah, he's talking about, he's talking about the future. Yeah, January. We're talking about our meeting is about here now. Yes, that's what we're talking about, and then we're talking about a future meeting that we have. Maybe that. So when we have a meeting and the town meeting in May, we'll be probably be able to ask for money for a study, so we can start moving forward. What the what the what is the need for the town and for the school? And my last question. I think I know the answer, but MSBA statement of interest. We're out. MSBA board is meeting in December. If invited, I think I'm pretty sure that I can't tell them the town would support a project right now. No, that's not for we us. Don't know. We don't know that. I mean, that's, that's not even us. They're going to ask us that every year. And I think and, uh, if the select board, finance committee, and school committee all supported it, I think that goes along. Well, I think that's what they mean by the town supporting it. I think they understand that the 6,000 residents we don't know. No, we don't. Really when I, but if invited this year in the next three weeks, four weeks, if I hear from them, I want to be honest with them because what I don't want is to say, oh yeah, we're going to support it, and then have a mess on everyone's hands, and then it fall apart, and then we don't get invited down the road because then we could be potentially given up reimbursement. So I just want to make sure. I, I'm pretty sure I know the answer. So but. is it is it? specific question about a new school or is it is it more general so can they help with yeah so uh, not to go down this path but long the long next step would be a feasibility study, study through, <laughs> through msba which is going to cost between like one and two million dollars so if three. our feasibility three. Three. one two and three million they said three million okay so just to talk about how expensive feasibility right so that feasibility study so, so if we had, that's the the first step that they would do a feasibility study and then they would present some options of what the scope of the work would be a total rebuild a renovation uh, that would come through personally I think you're better off in waiting because if all of this works and goes through then by the following year you should be in a position to say we've had a lot of work done in the town a lot of thinking about it and here's what we think we want to do Okay, that's yeah. fair. That's fair, and you have a united yep. plan. And that's what I think they want. That's what I believe we want. Everybody, not just we schools, it's like perfect. I just have such a hard time because I'm like, you're going to spend. I, we don't know this number, I guess, yet. But then, if we decide, like, or hear from that study, that then the best choice is to remodel our school or to not do option whichever choice it ends up being and stay here in Grammy. Then, in order to do anything to our schools, it's three million this year, and and like it just it well next year. Next. Year. But but <laughs> if someone if if well, if someone comes no, in and says correct, I but feel I'm the best. Is, is how many years out? Well, again, like what's the future plan for Grandy? Well, that's what do we're we really want. We're our starting it. Not to be here. So oh my God. here's the. I, I know. That's what we're starting now. A, okay, I'm yeah. moving on. I'm this, sorry. this, this. I think Can this I is like stop process. Can I to adjourn? <laughs> not well, that was quick, huh? Yeah, she went to, I'm ready for it. It's like this is like telling me that you'd be quiet. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Is it, Anybody? Is that, someone have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion I to adjourn. It. I will second. I'll Actually, I will. I will motion. No. Make a motion to adjourn. There's a second. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Take a motion to adjourn. Finance committee meeting. So, second. All in favor? Aye.